Whenever I learn a new sewing technique, a new embroidery stitch, or a creative application of something that is an old favorite, it allows my sewing to soar to new heights. And it doesn't hurt when our needles sprout wings. Today we will share how to add those amazing wing needle techniques for heirloom sewing by machine and how to plant beautiful bullion flowers in those precious created by hand treasures. Come soar with us on the wings of sewing elegance and we'll peek through a dolly's cathedral windows and land softly with more inspiration from vintage and heartfelt creations. Thank you for joining me on our travels today. Shall we begin our journey? This is a wonderful, beautiful, adorable baby bubble. This baby bubble is done out of handkerchief linen. And as you can see, it has a little girl sleeve in it, a little puffy sleeve. But with a little boy sleeve, a little straight sleeve, it would be just as adorable for a little boy. I love the machine embroidery, the little paisleys on this collar, the beautiful corded uh, wing needle entredeau that comes across the front of the bodice, the upper yoke, and then goes down. And you know what I love about this bubble? It's pleated, it isn't gathered. That also would make it perfect for a boy or a girl. Coming down and looking at this beautiful front, you can see the buttons have the three little beads. They're sewn on by hand and there are three little beads put in there to make it just perfect. I would love to turn it over for you to see the back, the upper back of this particular little bubble. It is so adorable. The collar, as you can see, is one piece and the little paisleys have been machine embroidered to fit, to fit just perfectly. Once again, this wonderful corded wing needle entredeau is on the upper yoke and then the little pleats are on the back. I love wing needle entredeau. It's a very tailored stitch, equally appropriate for little boys or little girls, and great when it's corded for women's clothes, too. Then, first of all, you're going to trace off your pattern, and then cord it, and then do the wing needle entredeau. Such a beautiful stitch. Now, this one-piece collar, as you can see, I'll kind of outline the collar for you. The little paisleys have been matched perfectly in software, so they can come all the way around, and then you just cut out your collar. By the way, this little paisley design was one, a, one of the designs that a friend of ours uh, designed and stitched for to complete her program at the Royal School of Needlework in London. I am so very, very pleased today to have as my guest, my friend, Nina McVeigh. Nina is an educator trainer for Bernina of America. Nina, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, we're gonna start with this little bubble. And um, as you mentioned, I do start by tracing off my pattern. So if I'm going to do the front yoke, I'm going to trace that yoke onto my linen and then draw the lines where I want that entredeau stitching with the wing needle. At my machine, I have placed a um, three groove cording foot on the machine. I actually have three grooves, but I'm only going to use the outer two grooves and I'm going to um, thread those grooves with a number five pearl cotton. The pearl cotton really emphasizes the wing needle stitch. It raises it so it sits on top of that cording and really um, makes it, um, it just gives it a lot of body. And, it just kind um, of stands up, does it? Yes, <laughs> definition. Not definition, I, that's yeah, a good word. <laughs> definition. So just choose, um, I've chosen the entredeau stitch on my machine and I like wing needle because it's so simple. I am just stitching. If I can follow a straight line, I can do this type of wing needle work. What kind of stabilizer do you have under there, Nina? Um, if I see puckering, I don't always use a stabilizer, but if I do see hmm. some puckering, I will use a poly mesh cutaway. And then when I'm done, I will just cut that away. It's very easy to cut away very close to those rows of stitching. 
and that cording foot makes it so easy to keep the to keep the pearl cotton in there. Absolutely. And I notice you're not pushing or pulling this stitch. You're letting the machine do all of the going back and forth and back and forth. Yes. If you push and pull, you will distort the stitch. The idea with the wing needle is that that needle is going back into the same hole several times to push those threads apart and create that hole. So I can do that, um, as I said, very easily with this foot, um, with the cording, and really give that stitch um, some definition on my piece. When I have finished doing the wing needlework, um, back to the construction of the garment, I want to look at that collar again. And the really fun part of this collar is that I have scanned the collar pattern piece into my embroidery software. That way I know exactly where to put that embroidery. I can mirror image these little paisley pieces. I can rotate them just so, so that they fit into this collar area. If I did not have my collar pattern there, I would not know if that was going to fit this way. I know it's going to fit perfectly with my, uh, allowing for my seam allowances. And then when I'm done, I'm just going to cut it out on those collar stitching lines. China, isn't it fun? All this software oh. and the fact that people really are learning. Uh, young yes. ladies and maybe a few men too, of course, from the ages of about six to about 96, I find, <laughs> are really enjoying the sewing and embroidery with the software. It is very fun. I wanted to let our viewers have one more look at this adorable bodice with the embroidery and the, the wing needle entredot and those sweet little buttons. You put, what, three beads? Three little beads in the oh, center just, just to match the linen. Just gave it that just perfect little look. Nina, I just love it. Thank you so much for making this beautiful oh, bubble for our viewers. It was a pleasure. And now Nina has some sewing inspiration ideas to share with you. Nina, I love table runners, which I use not only on my table, but on my buffet. Mm -hmm. And this one is just exquisite. Talk to us about it. Well, this is a um, table runner that I did uh, the design in my software. We have a monogram program um, in software, and I did a lace background within this frame, and I did it with the wing needle. So we can use our wing needle in in embroidery and then the outside edge of course is um, drawn thread work and I just also used a wing needle and did a blanket stitch around that drawn thread work. Oh, that is absolutely exquisite. Mm, thank now, you. Another beautiful uh, a table piece I would suppose is this beautiful heart and I love your scallops. Talk to me about this. <clears throat> well this scallop is done again on the machine um, using just a multi-motion stitch. Um, it's a wide stitch and then the outside edge after you've cut away that fabric um, is done by couching a pearl cotton onto that scallop following the edge just to neaten up that edge so we don't have a lot of thready um, edges to that. And then, of course, the design done in um, embroidery. And on this beautiful, beautiful, heavy, heavy, heavy linen, linen. Mm -hmm. and something totally different and absolutely <laughs> wonderful. This is a collar done with bits and pieces of lace. I like doing things like this because if you are like me um, and have a lot of bits and pieces um, or even lace maybe you only have a little tiny piece of lace that is very special um, maybe it's an antique piece of lace you can incorporate antique pieces along with new pieces to create a collar like this this is absolutely beautiful and i would i love the idea of those bits and of course all of us have a few of those bits and pieces Absolutely. some of us have several rooms of those bits and pieces <laughs> nina these are just beautiful thank you so much You're and now nina has a so quick so easy idea for you Nina, that is the most beautiful hanger cover i've ever seen <laughs> tell us about it <laughs> thank you um you know, a hanger cover is something that can be done for anything, whether it's a wedding, whether you want to do a special hanger cover for that baptismal gown. Um, it really can be done for anything. This was very fun to use um, one of the gorgeous embroidery designs, and then I just mirror imaged it. So I did my embroidery design on um, 
the piece of linen that I was using for my hanger cover first. Once that was done, I wanted just a little bit more stability for that fabric. So I did go ahead um, and draw my hanger cover onto my fabric. Now I didn't do that first because then I didn't have to worry about centering this design. I just went ahead and embroidered it. Excellent idea. <laughs> and, then, and then I drew my hanger cover onto my fabric and went back to the machine and free motion quilted around um, the design through my uh, linen and a lightweight batting and a muslin on the back side so that I did have um, some stability to that. Once I did that, I took each side and went to my serger. And I did a very tight three thread serger stitch along the bottom edge and along the top on those edges that we're going to show. Now I've just used a regular embroidery thread. In fact, it's the same thread that I used to embroider this design. Because I wanted a little bit more coverage here, I threaded my upper looper with two threads of that, of that same embroidery thread so that it really acted as a little bit heavier thread. And then, of course, um, sewed it together. Did you to sew it create, or search it? I actually searched it. You Thank searched you. it. <laughs> I searched it um, to create this very simple hanger cover. Now, I could have also put a zipper in the bottom of this hanger cover so that I would have something um, where I could put any extra things, especially for a bride, all those extra things yes. that she might want to keep with her dress on that special day. Um, or I could have put a little monogram in here for a special person. Oh, I just think that is wonderful and so pretty. And I love the idea of that little zipper to keep a number of things, including some people kind of hide things in their closet <laughs> in covers like that. Well, that's kind true. Kind of a little safe. <laughs> <laughs> Nina, thank you so very much for all of these wonderful ideas you've shared with our viewers. You're welcome. And next we have some hand embroidery to share with you. I am so happy to have as my guest today, Wendy Shane. Wendy is a regular designer for So Beautiful Magazine. She has studied and taught many places, but one of her places of study is the Royal School of Needlework in London. Wendy also is the designer of the Petite Poche pattern line. Wendy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. It's always great to be here. Today, I want to talk to you in the audience about um, looped bullions. Now, looped bullions are very easy to do, um, and usually you begin with a center. Now, our center is uh, granito and we'll talk about granitos a little later in another segment but first let me go and show you what I'm doing I'm tying on with a different color thread and I'm going to turn this to the back and we're going to tie on with just weaving stitches you never want to put a knot on the back of a bull um, on the back of a bullion because it sometimes interferes with the stitching itself and you don't want to really set yourself up for failure so just a few little weaving stitches don't worry about the thread tail because you can cut it off later now on the front and notice I'm not working with a hoop. I like to make these bullions without a hoop because you really need to be able to hold on to that loop and you'll see in a minute what I'm talking about. Now I'm gonna emerge just to the edge of the granito um, and come out and that would be my A position. Now a bullion is just a glorified back stitch. So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go into the fabric and exit just out the same exact opening as before. So now you see I have a continuous loop with the thread. Instead of pulling the needle all the way out, I'm going to wrap the tip of the needle. Now this one requires a lot of wraps. So I'm gonna to count to myself while you count along and see if I've put 25 on. That was a lot of wraps. That was 25 too. That's I right. counted. <laughs> so notice I didn't count the first wrap. I never count the first wrap because really it's just the, the wrap where I put the thread behind the needle. And 
I oftentimes would ask myself, now, did I count that first rap? So now as a law, I never <laughs> count the first rap. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure all the wraps are nice and evenly spaced on the needle. And then I like to do this little exercise of dragging the, the wraps up the needle just to loosen them up a little bit. Because with that many wraps, it oftentimes gets caught on the needle. So now with my thumb and my forefinger, I'm going to grasp the hold of my wraps and push through from the bottom. And hold on to the wraps. And notice I'm just holding on to the loop at this point. The reason is, is because I have so many wraps on there. If I let go, I may twist the loop and I don't want to do that. So now I'm going to let go. And what I was doing under my thumb is I was pulling the tension through so that the back stitch would be completely pulled through. And then the loops will hold place of the thread. In other words, it, it allows the thread to make a loop because of the wraps. Now to complete the stitch, I'm going to go down in the same position at B, and then I'm going to exit in the A position of the next loop. Okay, so now I'm going to make my next loop. Notice I've repositioned my hands. Same exact technique. Go down, come out the exact same spot, make my wraps. Remember the first wrap doesn't count. Twenty-five. Got it. Okay, now the number of wraps is equal to the the length of the loop that I require. So I could add wraps or subtract wrap, wraps as needed. So twenty-five I've come to realize is a pretty good balance, let's say. But like I said, you could make it just about any size you want. And I like to use one strand of thread when I'm making bullions, but of course you could always do two if you required an extra large bullion. Always use a round eye needle when you make a bullion, because if you use a long eye needle such as a crewel or a tapestry, the wraps will definitely get caught on the eye of the needle. Now I'm going to show you what a completed bullion looped bullion flower looks like. And now the only thing I need to do is turn it around and tie off. And so I'm going to turn it around and notice that all I have to do is take the needle and bring it through the mound. And I'm going to do that a few times just as though I tied on just the same way. And that is pretty much it. Now booped bull <laughs> Bull, looped bullion flowers <laughs> are pretty and dimensional and you can use them on just about anything. And that's all there is to it, Martha. Could we see the one over here on this, these beautiful dresses? Yes, I brought these dresses for everyone to see. Um, they are a, just a sweet little design that you can put on any type of garment. As you can see, I have it on a christening gown and on a day gown. It's the same design, and, um, and really it just adds a little bit more dimension to any garment. Oh, Wendy, that was just beautiful. I can't wait to try one of those. Oh, thank you, Martha. And next, I have a doll dressing idea for you. Many of you know how much I love dolls. My absolute favorite present I ever received in my whole life was in the third grade. I got a Tony doll for Christmas and Mama had stayed up after I went to bed at night for months and made her a whole wardrobe of clothes. You see, these are memories that really can't be bought. And I just want to encourage you to make that little one you love a doll wardrobe. Now, you might even want to make this beautiful dress and have this beautiful doll for yourself. After all, I'm just a little girl all grown up and I still love dolls and beautiful doll dresses. This dress is beautiful. It's in a robin's egg blue uh, Swiss batiste and the bodice is so pretty. It has just a little laces zigzag together with a little bit of silk ribbon run through. Entredeau at the bottom of the high yoke, a little gathered lace. Then, I, oh, the sleeves are so sweet. I just love the little puff sleeves with the entredeau. 
and the gathered lace on the sleeve. But what I really want you to look at today, and you are going to love this, is the fancy band. Now the fancy band has entredeau, two pieces of lace entredeau, but look at this beautiful, beautiful border. These are lace cathedral windows, and they're very easy to do. This one I'm going to show you exactly how to do, and they look very hard, but they're not. Then entredeau, two pieces of lace insertion entredeau, and gathered French lace. Oh, what a beautiful dress and what a beautiful way to enjoy your heirloom sewing. Now, how do you do those lace cathedral windows? It really is not hard, although it looks like it is. I'm working with bias fabric. I have two pieces of bias fabric, the width plus the seam allowances. I'm going to do a machine based right down the middle, attaching these two pieces, we'll see if I can put, attaching these two pieces of bias, machine basting, not a tight stitch, just a short, I mean a long machine based stitch. Now the real secret is, remove my lace, I have to turn that, the, I have to turn it the other way. All right, let me just open this up and show you what I mean. I basted it, machine basted it this way, my bias strips are here. Now I can see the machine basting line. I have to then turn them the other way where when I pull it I can play peekaboo. I can see. I can just pull it apart. I must turn those pieces in the other direction. Now it's real critical when I put my lace down I'm going to use either a washable glue or the uh, temporary spray adhesive is good too just to spray it down because I must somehow with a temporary glue or spray I must get this lace put right in the middle of that line of basting. I do not sew through two layers and two layers. After I get my glue basted down, I then pick up the fabric and put one layer back and sew that lace down, zigzagging, I'm sorry, straight stitching, one side only through one piece of fabric, not through two. After I sew that, then I go to the other side, I pull the three pieces of, excuse me, the two pieces of fabric back to make three pieces over here, and I straight stitch this side down. Now then, the next step is, pretend like you don't see those yet. I open it, turn it to the other side. I'm going to bar tack, bar tack, bar tack, every, that's one and a half inches, by the way, between that bar tack. Bar tack, bar tack, bar tack, and that would still be closed, bar tack. Then I pull the basting thread out, and you can see what I have done. I folded those back. Now, how do you fold them back? You simply open them and finger press them. And you know what I like to do? I like to stick a glass head pin in there. Let me get my iron. And then I like to press it, always using a glass head pin. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble because the other heads will melt. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. Remember, the basting thread has been pulled out and the bar tacks are there. All right, I'm gonna open it. I'm going to open it, and as you know, I like to use that glass head pin, the glass head pin, hold it open, and come in and press it right on top of those glass head pins so nothing will get hurt. Then, to finish it off, I'm going to straight stitch here, 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 I go in this direction because it's much easier to straight stitch those little openings and then I'll have to do the other side. Now let me show you, and then you insert it like you would any piece of fabric. There's what it looks like when it's finished, all stitched down on both sides. And then to make the fancy band, I put two pieces of lace together, entredeau to lace, entredeau to lace. And one quick trick, it's easier if you quarter, if you mark it in quarters, so you'll know exactly how your lace and your entredeau line up. Won't you come with me and let me share a beautiful piece of my antique clothing collection with you? I purchased this blouse many years ago in Camden Passage in London. I think the dealer's name was Annie. It just seems like that might have been her name. It has beautiful, beautiful padded satin stitch done in this really elegant scalloped V. Wonderful, wonderful hand stitching. Pin tucks here, more hand stitching, then folded tucks, 
more pin tucks which go down the sleeve and as always the sleeves in the back are usually as pretty as the front of these beautiful Victorian blouses. I always like to turn it around so you can see the back. As you can see more wonderful embroidery and then the pin tucks go all the way across the raglan sleeves and there's a tie at the bottom. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. I've had a good time and I more importantly I hope you have. Won't you join me next time? Thank you.